I did this to myself. <laughs> I'd like to think at this point in minimal, minimalism after two years that I don't do this to myself, but I do. Obviously, I do. Decluttering and minimalism is a perpetual journey and requires evaluation and thought and decision making and emotions. And this here behind me is it's only going to take me a few minutes to deal with, but it's been like this for a couple of months. All the things behind me. Uh, but probably belong inside our RV. They came out of the RV to be cleaned, washed, or they were purchased since the last time we took the RV out because it's something we needed in the RV. And so that's what this is. This is my dumping ground for all the things that need to go back into that vehicle. I have identified the two reasons that it happened. Why did clutter collect here? Number one, my habits. Number two, the stuff that I'm putting in here doesn't have a home in our house. So it just becomes clutter. Okay, so we took this out because it's meds and we didn't want to leave meds in a hot RV. <laughs> My little labeling system that I used. Oh, that's no longer sticky, but anyway, I mean, it's first aid. First aid. Um, Andy bought a shower head. For the RV and I bought picnic table covers. Uh, when I was thinking about this closet, I, I, I needed to understand why it happened so that I could make it not happen again. Um, and so what I need to do is when we come home from RV trips, I need to have one or two bins. I think that's what it'll end up being. One or two empty bins, which we certainly have in the basement, to put here to put stuff in and having a place to organize and collect the items that need to go somewhere else is going to be the solution to preventing the clutter from collecting again. All of this is RV, this whole basket. Why did it come out? While I was thinking about the reasons that clutter collects in my closet here, I came up with 21 reasons that clutter does collect. Uh, it's what I've experienced, what I've gone through the last two years. I left it in a blog post below, 21 reasons that clutter collects. Um, it might be an interesting read for you if it's if you have these little struggle pockets or these secret closets where you just stuff a bunch of stuff or you've got stuff all over your house and you're trying to figure out how can I make this not be repetitive? How can I make it so clutter doesn't gather here? What do I have here? Oh, teeth care. This goes here and I bought um, a shower curtain for the RV. Okay. This is what I think I had. This is what I had hanging in my closet that did not work. Um, so I'm not gonna put this back in the RV. <clears throat> I have two ideas for solutions for the cl my closet in the RV. It's not a big deal when we only go camping for the weekend, so I'm not gonna deal with it for like the coming trips, but if we take another long trip like we did this summer, I am gonna come up with a solution. I'm either gonna build, like have Andy build these shelves that I saw inside that seem really easy to build, or I'm gonna get one of these that has a zipper front. So things actually stay in, which means this is, this is declutter. I'm gonna donate this. It's I used it for just that month in the RV and I didn't even use it because it, every day when we drove, stuff would fall out. So I didn't even, I mean, you can tell it's like brand new. I'm gonna donate this. This journaling, this does belong in here. I'm gonna be, okay. These are all things that had to be washed from our last trip. Now I'm feeling overwhelmed because I feel like I took out the stuff for the RV and there's still a lot of junk in here. Still a lot of clutter that doesn't have a home in the house and just gets dumped in here. So now I'm feeling a little overwhelmed. Um, a big thing for me that I've learned is to allow space when you feel overwhelmed, like emotional space. And then allow it to be painful if it needs to be because when it's 
painful and uncomfortable, it tends to make a mark more for me. And I, I don't repeat the same habits. I change my habits. Okay. One thing at a time. I'm gonna start over here. Because if I can clear space, like I haven't even cleared a space yet. <laughs> okay, so if I can, um, I have a journal problem. ones on the floor, not even the ones in my journal bag. I have a journal problem. Okay. Papers are going to go back here for now. I'm not trying to deal. Okay. Another journal. Okay. This is just a box with some papers in it. So this is a box with papers. That's what I'm going to use that for. RV. So whatever this is, this looks like tax stuff. I'm just gonna I'm gonna put it here because I need to process each and every one of these pieces of paper as shred, trash, or keep. <clears throat> YouTube equipment, YouTube equipment. All right, so now we're getting into it. Now we're where I want to be. Stuff I want. More journal. Okay, I have a. Hi, my name is Erica. I have a journal problem. Where's my trash bag? Yay, finally trash. Oh, this reminds <laughs> The other day, um, somebody sat on my glasses on the couch and I was like, please don't do that. I don't know where my extras are. My backups. Let's put this where I will... Remember, okay, where's a really good place for backup glasses? My nightstand. That just came to me. That's where these are going. Okay, this is the bag that I was going to send back to Coach for repairs, and I haven't done that yet. Um, and then I just shoved a bunch of like purse like in here more other purses and wallets That's, this is a purse of purses okay i don't want to deal with that right now another thing i've learned over time is to not only set boundaries for items using baskets or closet but also set boundaries for yourself and i know where my head's at today and my head cannot do paperwork and cannot do a bag of bags and wallets. I can't, I don't have the emotional bandwidth to be able to make those decisions right now. What I wanted to be able to do was, was clear out the RV clutter, see what was left and then just make this closet better. That was my goal and that's what I'm gonna stick to. I have now two projects for later, this purse and this paper. Now. If I don't deal with it right away, it probably will attract clutter. I feel like clutter can be magnetic. And if I keep it in here, it's going to attract future clutter. So what I might do is pull it out um, and put it next to my bed, which forces me to deal with it because I'll see it more often. And then when the mood strikes, I'll be able to do it. Or when the motivation is there to do it, I'll be able to do it. But have to break these things down into mini projects. Another journal. Oh my gosh, I never even took this one out of the pack. Why do journals feel hard for me? That's weird. I actually just have my my dollar store journal method that I okay that is like my my absolute method that I do right now. Um my kids spilled water on it the other day. Any heart attack because all of my all of my ideas are in there and my tasks and I was watching them melt away in my dollar store notebook when he spilled his water because I was doing my brain dump next to a kid and I was like, oh, that's that's bad news bears right there. Like, how can I fix that problem? I don't know because I really like my my other slipper. 
I knew if I hung on to it, I'd find it. So uh, anyway, back to my point, my question for myself was, why am I struggling with the idea of letting go of journals? Why is that hard for me? I don't know. I'm about to give that one some thought. Why, why am I attached to the idea of hanging onto these journals? Oh, this is an extra one I bought for the RV. Uh, just total side note, I have four of these in my house and I'm pretty sure they saved my life over the summer. We had an HVAC guy here and he was here for the whole week replacing the HVAC unit, the AC unit in the attic. And he left his acetylene torch in the basement. His acetylene torch had a leak and he did not know it and acetylene is lighter than air. It went higher than the air, and the first alarm that went was the top story of our house, outside of the kids' bedrooms. That was the first carbon monoxide detector that went off. It wasn't detecting carbon monoxide, it was detecting acetylene, and triggered it. As the acetylene started to fill the house, the carbon monoxide detector went off on the top floor, reading 246. I was at the top of the stairs, I looked at it, I was like, that is bizarre. Why is that going? Didn't finish my sentence before the ones on the on the main level went off. Ran downstairs, grabbed the kids and the dog, went outside. I did not need to know what was happening. I did not know what was happening. I got everybody else. There's no way three of these triggered within a minute of each other, accidentally or fault with fault. That it was no way. So we're outside. So we got out of the house. I called 911. All four alarms were going off in the house. And the fire company went in, they detected Freon, they couldn't figure out what's going on. They were able to pinpoint with their $30,000 meter, not their little $20 reader, their $30,000 meter, where the problem was. And it was acetylene in the basement. That guy's torch was leaking. Yeah, so now I have these on every floor in the house, every level in the house, outside the kids' bedrooms, two on the main level, one in the basement, and then there's a built-in in the house. And I got one for the RV. That was a long story short, but that's that. I'll link that below if that is an interesting story for you. <laughs> Okay, pa papers. Uh, basically, I organized clutter. That's what I did. That's not a good move. Because it didn't solve the problem. I still have stuff all over this closet. I didn't solve the problem. Okay. Do I need all this? That's the next question. Do I need all this? The first step is to declutter. The second step is to organize everything you've chosen to keep. And the third step is to clean. Um, and I can't even like organize the stuff I chose to keep because I chose to keep too much. Okay. This is RV. I'm gonna go put this in the RV pile. Okay, here's everything I took out that needs to go back into the RV. He brings it home today to get it ready for the trip. So all of this is gonna go in the RV today when he comes home. It's not, it's not the greatest of afters. You know, it's not like some big reveal with total organization, but it is better and it is real life. So there you go. So I gotta, I gotta, I gotta live with the decision of journals for a little while. In my head, I know that's ridiculous, but I need to address the reason that I have these so that I don't continue to buy more journals. I need, I need to give that some, some deep thought. This is a purse of purse items and other purses and wallets that I need to go through and deal. That is just a box of paperwork, mostly taxes I wanna keep, so should be easy when I feel like dealing with it. All I did was add to the office supplies and put them all in one spot. That's uh, Andy's magic cards and more office gear. And then over here we have travel bags and I didn't touch that shelf, but it's better. I'm gonna close the door because looking at it brings me anxiety and stress. I've done what I wanted to do for today and it's good enough for today. I will continue to address that closet and get it to the way I want. What I need to do is think about the vision of that closet and ultimately how do I want it to look? How do I want it to function? What do I want it to do for me? I haven't nailed down that yet. So once I do that, then I can take some more action on what I wanna keep, how I wanna keep it, how I wanna organize it and then make it better. That's not where I am today. I typically post videos about minimalism, decluttering and organizing everything that is left. Subscribe if you like that. Thanks for watching.